Hey, what's going on, everybody? Game Geezer here. I um, had a few questions from uh, some fellow YouTubers here. Uh, one of them being Stress Tech, who's been pretty cool. And uh, I just wanted to address uh, some questions I got um, about the auto overclock feature in the BIOS. For and uh, I also had a question that um, the manual clocking versus uh, software clocking overclocking. Um, I'm going to tell you that uh, manually overclocking yourself is always going to be a lot better than software overclocking because um, you're going to be able to get more uh, overclock out of your whatever it is you're trying to overclock and you're also going to be able to have better voltages. And uh, we're just going to kind of go through some things like that. So right now this is my manual overclock, uh, 5 GHz, uh, the RAM 29, uh, set to 2933 and my uh, CPU cache ratio is 45 and uh, my core voltage is 1.3 you can see here and uh, you can see I got some decent temps there 32 and um, my fans are running um, uh, my case fans are running at a static 80 percent with uh, the fan controller here all of them and all of my um, fans that are on my uh, AIO are running at 50 percent right now so you can't really hear him uh, honestly I can put them up to 80 percent and I don't really hear him that much either um, but I got the coarse hair um, LMLs which is uh, magnets uh, magnet levitation um, they're a lot they're supposed to be uh, superior in silence and stuff like that I don't know but I just like them so I got them and um, uh, the results that I got in the beginning here with uh, letting this overclock for me versus um, doing it manually uh, were far different especially before the uh, delid and the relid um, now since my CPU is um, has been delitted and relitted um, I am pretty confident I should get some good results here um, beforehand when I first got it out of the box and I lit the software auto overclock um, if you go back and you watch one of my older videos uh, called Fear of Clowns, I was doing a, uh, a stream on that and I was playing it. And you can see while I'm playing the game, I get several temperature warnings where my CPU hits 84C and I believe my CPU is running at 4.8 or 5.0. Uh, I'm not sure exactly, I don't remember. But um, that was with the auto 5 gigahertz um, overclock that's set up um, automatically in the BIOS here. And that was just terrible. I, uh, to me, before doing the delid and all that stuff, it was just um, honestly, it was the results were garbage because the temperatures were just too high. Um, so, anyways, now that that's been fixed, and I don't have to worry about temperatures, and uh, I'm curious to see what the software can do with what I have now. Like, let's say that even though I know I've delitted it, let's just pretend I bought it that way, and I just popped it in. And I want to see what the software is going to do and the different ways to um, get the software to overclock for you. Now before I do all this, I'm going to save my profile so I can come back to it. I'm going to make sure that it's saved. And then we'll go and I'm going to show you the different ways you can get um, the BIOS to overclock for you and what kind of results I'm going to get and uh, things like that. So let's go figure this out. Um, so if you go into Tools, you see I got ASUS Overclocking Profile. So I can go in here and you see mine that I have now is uh, I'm calling it 5 gigahertz safe and this is my what I run every day at 5 gigahertz with no AVX uh, RAM at 2933 and the core voltage at 1.3 and this is extremely extremely stable for me now you see I got one right above it called max power and this is where I stress it to 1.45 volts and I have that saved also and um, on this profile um, it hits 5.2 and it's mostly stable it's not as stable as the 5 gigahertz um, I can't run the three benchmarks and all that at the same time but I can run two benchmarks and uh, it'll play games all day at 5.2 um, but I have to crank the voltages up again from 1.3 even to 1.45 which is a massive increase in voltage and uh, I don't really want to go beyond that but I would need to if I wanted this to become a stable uh, thing. Um, now temperatures are fine with 1.45 volts, so I could in theory go up in voltage, but I just don't feel that it's worth it for the extra 0.2. 
versus the massive uh, heat reduction at 5 even. And uh, uh, considering the voltage would be significantly lower at 5 gigahertz. These are my manual ones that I have set. Um, but I'm going to make sure anyways that this one is saved because um, I think I adjusted some fans, some fan curves on this one. So I want to make sure that this is saved. And um, yeah, so yes. So that's for sure saved, at least I hope it is. And um, now I'm going to uh, reset to default and then we're going to just, I'm going to go through some of the different overclocking methods that are in the BIOS. I don't recommend using any overclocks uh, software inside of Windows because um, you're just not going to get as good as results uh, as far as the BIOS because when everything is set in the BIOS it's just basically set in stone. You're not going to get anything weird because um, sometimes when you adjust settings in, in the BIOS and then you go into Windows and adjust stuff um, it just it does weird stuff sometimes so I recommend if you're going to do the overclocking thing um, try not to use any softwares inside of Windows or anything like that. Um, I do like to use the Intel Extreme Tuner uh, just before I run benchmarks to verify, you know, on my videos and stuff. Like, hey, look, this is what I have and things like that. And it's cool for that, but I really don't like doing that inside of Windows. And um, I just feel that it's better to do it in, in the BIOS. It just takes a little bit of extra time, but it's I think it's um, more stable that way. Um, so anyways... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, set it back to default. So let's see. Um, I'm going to optimi load optimize defaults here. And then I'm going to hit F10. Okay, so now it's rebooting. I might have to reboot twice to change all my settings. But let's go over this here. I don't know if you guys can tell I'm using a nicer phone to record this, so um, it should be a lot clearer for you guys um, until I get a capture card, which, you know, it's all about money and stuff, so whenever I get some extra cash, I'll try and uh, get something nicer so you guys can see these better, but I think this camera's doing a pretty decent job. So I'm not too concerned. All right, so now you can see it's all back to stock. Uh, RAM is 2133. And you can see 45 is the max, but you can see my voltage dropped pretty good. So 1.136, that's really nice. Um, so there's a couple different things you can do here. Now, um, right off the bat, I'm gonna show you guys I also had a question about this one, the TPU. So let's go ahead and uh, run TPU. And uh, let me see what's the difference between one and two. Okay, so TPU one is for air cooling and TPU two is for uh, water cooled, which is what I have. I have AIO, so it's nothing fancy, but it's still water. So I'm gonna uh, let it do this on its own. And let's just see what it does. I know it's got sufficient cooling. Um, all that stuff, as much power as it could want, the power supply and all that, and uh, the D-Lid and Relid should should make some good results happen, so I'm just curious to see what it does. So let's find out. It did a 14% overclock. Now this is kind of cool, it, it does uh, broadcast your overclock. It's like, hey look, you got an overclock of this much. So uh, let's see what it decided to do here. So you can see by letting the BIOS auto do it on its own, it gave me a 4.8, which is uh, extremely safe. Uh, 2933, so it gave me a cache frequency of 42, which should, we should bump that up to 45, honestly, or at least 43. Um, and you can see it bumped up my voltage a little bit, but not very much. So that's pretty cool. So this is definitely uh, extremely reasonable. Um, no offset or anything. Multiplier 48. This is a good, just straight up overclock and not really having to do anything. Um, honestly, uh, it set my RAM perfectly. I'm sure um, if I just go and I set it to um, 
uh, mode two, I might still have to do that. Let me see if it did that for me or not. Let's see. Timing. It set it to auto, but um, which is fine. But it honestly should be on mode, just straight up mode two, because I mean, when you know your RAM, you, it's not changing, you know. Honestly, um, so that that would be one thing I would still change. Um, let's see what else it did here. Uh, you did set my RAM voltage automatically to 1.35, which uh, I did in my manual overclock as well. So that's pretty cool. It, it figured that out on its own. Um, okay, dokie. Let's see. It's got its own adaptive mode set. Pretty neat. It did a lot of uh, really nice things automatically in here for me. Honestly, I could, if I was still not happy with this, I could just change this to uh, sync all cores. And just change this to 50 and that's pretty much identical to what I've already got in my manual clock but uh, let's say that you didn't want to do the RAM you just wanted to do the CPU or whatever or you wanted to see what else there is um, I'm going to show you another one that's in here um, it's the easy tuning wizard I believe yes this is the one so you can also use this feature and it does the easy tuning wizard. Um, you can do in RAID, whatever, all that stuff. But we're just going to focus on the CPU. Um, so you can do uh, this here. Just hit next. And it's just going to ask you, select your computer usage. This is daily. I know it's hard to see. And this one's gaming and media editing. Um, so this one's more of a lower overclock. Like This would be like a 14% like we already have. And this one would be uh, whatever the most... Uh, that Asus feels safe giving to us. So let's try that one. Uh, now it's asking us if we have fan, uh, a box cooler, a tower cooler, or a water cooler. or not sure. But we know we have water, so I'm going to pick water. Um, which would yield some of the best results. So let's try that out. And it's wanting to do a 17% overclock with a 0% difference to the RAM. But um, that's fine because we know that we can just uh, clock the RAM to 2933 or you can run the TP or XMP or any of those things however you want to do it but let's just let that do its thing and see what it'll what kind of numbers it'll pump out and I do really like the way it, it shows your overclock percentage um, on the splash screen while it's loading I think that's pretty cool so now it's uh, setting all the stuff in the BIOS here loading up so now it should show seven, uh, 17 percent on the splash screen when it hits up when it posts let's see 4F I'm going to give it a couple more seconds if it doesn't post I'll just do a reboot and we'll try one more time if it takes longer than 30 seconds, I feel like that's too long. But if it takes like 15 or 20, don't panic. And we can always reset the BIOS. Um, there's a reset switch, so you don't ever have to uh, worry about messing with your settings and stuff. But I do recommend saving a profile. Oh, there it goes. Look at that, 17% overclock. So, um, let's just uh, watch it do its thing, see what happens. Post in the safe mode. There's probably a voltage error, because the voltage was still pretty low. Yeah, let's run setup. Oh, it did, uh, it did change some stuff. That was weird. So it changed my uh, RAM frequency to, that would be my issue, it changed my RAM to 3021, cache, this is kind of weird, um, I don't like that it changed my, my RAM, because that's just not cool, I'm going to try to do the easy tune one last time, 
uh, for the highest setting here, or you know what, better yet, I'm gonna go to default and then do um, do that. Let it do the 17% because maybe it uh, tried to overclock on my other overclock. So let's just load the defaults and then we'll load the 17, the automatic 17% overclock. Um, I would always recommend loading the defaults. I just got carried away. Yeah, do my defaults and then we'll do 17% auto overclock again. We know the 14% is good and the 14% um, on the uh, TP, the TPU one, which is pretty good. I like the TPU one because it set my RAM perfectly and it set my CPU uh, at 4.8, which is actually really respectable. Just uh, everything, all the settings it just automatically picked up on uh, were pretty good. Um, but let's try the tuning wizard one more time. Do next, gaming and media, water. 17%, okay, and it's not gonna change the RAM, is what it says, so let, let's just see what happens. If it does overclock my RAM too high again, though, it's not gonna post, um, because 2933 is the uh, perfect amount. It didn't show my 17%, which is a frowny face for me. I like seeing that. Let's just see if it'll post into Windows, and then um, see what happens here. It's posted, so that's good. Now let's just go back into the BIOS and see what it what it did in there. I wish it would show me my seventeen percent overclock. That's the whole fancy part of doing the doing it that way oh that's interesting um wow okay um a lot of different settings that I'm used to seeing so it changed quite a bit it wants to do max turbo mode of 4944 a lot of weird numbers in here um target ram is 2197 which is weird but it also has XMP of 3000 um, I think that should be I think the RAM thing is the only thing that's really screwing this up is that it's trying to uh, set my RAM to a really weird state so I'd recommend that if you're gonna do this you adjust your RAM manually with the uh, DRAM frequency just change that I know mine, so I know mine's 2933. It's stable. So I think other than that, this would be fine. Yeah, this would be fine. Um, but I don't like the way that it is... Uh, the way it's changing everything is just weird. Um, it's trying to clock up my memory with my CPU together and it's causing uh, issues which is interesting because um, I didn't get that before, but it's fine. Um, so I definitely would recommend between those things that you use TPU because that gave me the most accurate just straight up. Um, using the Easy Tuning Wizard was good for the 14% overclock, but when I went to the Gaming and Media one, it was giving me the 17%, but it was uh, screwing up my RAM settings to the point where it would cause instability going beyond my my RAM, RAM's actual limit, so uh, there's something for you. Um, now something that's extra cool in here that I wanted to show you guys for last is, um, if I can find it, it's, I believe in tools, let me see here, there is a, um, a preset ASUS overclock somewhere in here um, let me dig around for it a second. Okay, so I found it, and I was a big deep to D. Um, it's right on the extreme tweakers, uh, right here where you basically uh, post up to when you first get into BIOS here. 
and it shows your clocks and all that. So right now I'm set to um, the defaults. Um, so it was right in front of my face the whole time. I was just looking too hard. Um, overclocking presets. Now these are made specifically by Asus themselves. And if you click on that, it's got a couple different profiles for you automatically. So you got um, the down here, the 4000 megahertz RAM overclock. Excuse me. The 3733, these are RAM overclocks. Um, the 380 BCLK overclock profile, I'm not sure what that is or does. Then there's a 360 and a 340. Um, I'm not sure on those. But one that definitely stands out to me are these two. And um, you get a 5 gigahertz overclock. And these are for the 7th generation K series, the i77, or the 7700K in particular. And what's cool is they uh, test, they overclock about a thousand of these CPUs. And they basically take the general numbers and get, and put together this profile. So this is pretty neat. So this is a good one if you have a 7700K and an ASUS board. You can um, go straight to this one um, as long as you have a K series, a 7th gen K series. And let's just load it up. Let it do the 5 gigahertz profile. And we'll just hit F10. And just see what we get. Let's see if it'll post and then we'll go into BIOS and check out what it did on its own with this profile setting. Now the um, Features in the BIOS uh, do a pretty good job depending on which one you use. The TPU uh, mode worked the best for me, and the ASUS profiles in particular that I'm showing you now are, are going to do a good job because um, they're tailored to my hardware. So um, it did post. I'm sure it would pass a test, but let's go ahead and go into BIOS so we don't waste too much time and uh, see what, what settings it uh, feels are best with this profile. If you can, stay away from in Windows software, overclocking software, because you can see there's so much you can do in the BIOS that there's really no need to mess with any of that or have it running. Um, so what it did for me here is it gave me a 5 gigahertz overclock. It left my RAM alone, which I kind of like, um, for more stability. It just focused on the CPU, and it left the cache alone. So um, the, really the best way uh, you could tune this out a little better is you could... Uh, manually set the RAM with into mode 2, go to 2933 or whatever yours is. Um, you may even need mode 1 or just leave it on auto and just clock your RAM up to your uh, what you know it can handle. And then you can bump up the cache frequency a little bit. And then you can also play with voltages. Like right now, um, it's at 1.136. I'm sure it's at auto voltage and it's got an offset or whatever and it'll just... Um, turn up the voltage as it needs it, which is is fine, but I kind of like the um, 1.3 volts even and I like it to be set um, to where I'm always at 5 gigahertz that it'll never throttle down to 4.2 It'll just stay at 5 volt even and just stay at max power all the time um, I prefer that to throttling up and down and voltages bump, bouncing around but uh, yeah, so if I, I just need to bump up my RAM speed and then bump up my voltage on my RAM this way and it would be it'd be all good to go. Um, this profile did do a good job doing that. Um, it, it solely focused on the processor, but if I go in and I just change my RAM settings and then add some more cache frequency, this would be a good tune on here. Um, and then of course mess with the voltage a little bit if you're if you you know I would play with the voltage a little bit. Um, you could just leave it as auto. It's it's good as is. This profile is going to be good as is, I'm sure. Um, so let's go back and do the gamer one. Now the gamer one is very interesting. So the gamer's profile here, pretty cool. Uh, and I'm going to show you why. Now it says, would you like to apply all core enhancement with XMP settings for improved performance? Let me know for Intel stock operation. Um... 
I normally hit no because the XMP setting is wrong for my RAM. Now it sounds good when you're reading it because you know it's like yes, push yes because you want the more speed. But in in this scenario, I'm gonna push no because it's gonna incorrectly overclock my RAM. So I'm just gonna hit no. I'll just leave that as manual. We'll do F10, and this profile is pretty cool because you can see that it adjusts all the cores differently. The first two are set to 4.8, and then 4.7, and then 4.6. And that's because the way games are um, are RAM or uh, running, most of the time you really don't use four cores. You just use the first two. Um, so this is good for you know what they call a gamer's profile, and and it's true. This would be a good setting um, if you're concerned with temps and stuff, because not all the cores would be running at uh, top speed basically. So you would get some leeway with uh, with the uh, heat that's coming out. Let's go back into the BIOS. And I think it uh, still adjusted my RAM incorrectly, so let's go check it out. So this is just a big issue you're gonna have. Yeah, see, it set my RAM to 3000. That's not gonna work. Um, but you can see it did bump up my cache frequency to 44. 48, but all the cores are a little different. So you can see the first two cores are 48 and then 47 and 46. And this is kind of a, a little wonky, but this does yield really good temps and things like of that nature. So pretty cool, um, but I don't want XMP. I want, I want manual. So definitely uh, just keep an eye on your on your RAM there because it's just gonna it's gonna mess you up trying to do its thing and it's it's kind of annoying because this is DDR4 3000 but it just will not run at that speed it will it'll post in a Windows but it's not stable if I run a benchmark it will freeze uh, you'll hear some noise coming out of the speakers all that stuff and that's when you have a RAM issue while you're overclocking so um, I guess that's, this is a Vexier RAM, and I guess that's why Asus um, partnered with a Vexier, and they now have ROG certified a Vexier RAM. And I guess all that means is um, you're not going to have this issue like I'm having by having to downclock slightly uh, to run stable. Um, I'm a little disappointed in that because I did spend so much on the RAM, but um, I would say that most of the money I spent was just for looks. Uh, because I'm going with the green and black. Um, so, I mean, I'm not too upset about it because RAM speed really doesn't make a big uh, deal. But when you, sp you spend that kind of money on RAM sticks, it is a little annoying. Um, but anyways, that's some of the profiles there. So you can use your um, overclocking presets here. Um, you can use the Asus ones, which are all pretty good. Um, you can use the Easy Tuning Wizard, but just be careful on your RAM settings because those are going to mess you up a lot. Um, at least in my case, they, they've been getting in the way constantly, as you've seen in this video. But if you... Um, just an, another really good one. The closest one that's worked the best is just straight up TPU. And just run TPU2. Just let it do its thing. And TPU2 it seems to give me the best results other than just the um, the 5 gigahertz overclock profile that Asus has in this board already. Um, and I would recommend the TPU2 because um, even if you don't have a K-series i7700K or whatever, a KB Lake, it's, it's going to do a pretty good job. It should do a pretty good job uh, getting a general decent tune on there for you. And you get the cool splash screen. Let's let it boot up. Gave me a 14% overclock, which is good, um, especially if you don't know anything about overclocking and all the settings and you're scared to mess with them. Um, I mean, this is pretty good for what it gives you. So it did post. Cool. Let's go back into BIOS. We knew this one would work, though. We did do this in the beginning of the video. But um, I'm just showing you to finish this video off my favorite one, which is the TPU, out of all the ways that there are. That splash screen's pretty cool. 
Um, when you do a manual clock, you don't get that little splash screen there. Um, so, yeah, I really like the way TPU did it. Um, it's my favorite one so far. Because um, it set all my cores to a multiplier 48. It set my RAM to manual 100. Um, and the frequency here, uh, which is, is good for the CPU and all that stuff. It, so it gave me a 4.8 even with no AVX. So that means I'm going to run consistent 4.8. Uh, it set my RAM perfectly, 2933, and it gave me a boost in the cache frequency, which is also nice. So, um, out of all the methods, the best one was TPU2, and it adjusted my voltage correctly, too. Um, 1.35, which is a little high, um, because I can run 5.0 at 1.3 volts even, but it did a really good job at getting very accurate on its own. Um, straight up so if you've made it to the end of this video as far as all the different ways to do this if you're not into overclocking the TPU 2 gave me the best uh, straight up just overclock right away it got the closest good voltages um, good overclock no offset uh, it gave me a boost in the cache and it set my RAM perfectly so just it gave me a general good uh, overclock on its own so it did do a good job and um, yeah so that's just something to think about when you're getting into this let's see it even set my RAM voltage to 1.35 so this is definitely the way to do it as far as all the ways so um, definitely use TPU um, the easy tuning wizard does work but you saw it's a little wonky and then there are the overclocking presets which do work but again they're just neither one of those can touch the TPU the TPU just hits it on the head so I would definitely recommend that over all the other methods and again you can use in Windows software but I just really wouldn't I think that this is your best bet I'm gonna go back into my profiles and I'm gonna load my profile too so let's load two. Yes. F10. It's going to set all my stuff. Yeah, 1.3 volts. I'm just going over this. Um, Got all my fans and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna load my profile back up. I'll go into Windows a little bit too and show you guys some some softwares. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So here we are back in Windows here, and uh, I'm gonna talk about some softwares that you can use to also overclock if you're not comfortable with the BIOS. Um, so I was asked specifically about the AI Suit 3 with uh, Asus here. Now you see this little bar here. Um, you'll normally first you get this, and uh, if you go to this, click on this window here, this box will pop up. Now what you need to do first is you need to open this area here, and you'll see you got all these uh, options here. But you want to go to uh, Easy Update, and you want to make sure that your first of all your BIOS is current. So you do a check here, and then you click where it says Connect. And it says there's no need to update, so then you know you're good. Because you definitely don't want to be tuning stuff if your BIOS isn't even current. Because um, you're going to possibly not be able to take advantage of your own hardware that way. Um, so now that's out of the way. Another update utility I would highly recommend is this one here. It's called the Intel Driver Update Utility. Um, this uh, Most of your computer builds are basically going to be Intel-based. Um, I mean, because AMD is just now making a comeback, so most most likely this will be able to help you out. Um, so I would recommend downloading this Intel Driver Update Utility. Um, it's pretty nice of them to just give you this. It just basically goes over your stuff, and it's just like, hey, you should update this or not. And uh, it makes it real convenient, because it looks like one of those ones you would see 
normally on the site that make it like on Google that make it look real easy and you're just like it just does a scan and then blah 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 and then they want you to pay for it but um, this is an Intel one that's free and it's just gonna look for drivers for your Intel stuff which is pretty nice so you just run this um, I don't have anything that needs to be update updated but uh, right when you open it it does a scan and um, if there's anything you need it'll list it here and you can just download it from them so pretty cool so I'd make sure that your Intel chipset drivers are up to date and that your BIOS is current before you start really getting into the overclocking. Um, and once that's all good, we don't need the update anymore. So um, there, there's a couple softwares that come with it. Um, so you got CPU-Z, which is kind of nice if you want to double check your settings here. Um, you can see my CPU running at 5 gigahertz and all that stuff. Um, but the two softwares that we're really going to talk about, because um, I don't want to waste too much time on this, is uh, the AI suit and the Intel Extreme Tuning, because that's those are the ones that are going to be important. Let me close these out. Make sure I don't get confused. Okay, so um, right off the bat, I would suggest... Um, Honestly, as far as preference goes, because you get these two, you get the, uh, this one is my favorite, the Asus Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. I like this one more because it's really straightforward to the point, whereas the Asus AI Suit 3 is kind of confusing because it's got a whole lot of stuff throwing at you. It's, it's wanting to adjust your fans, your voltages, your temperature, your power save mode, your CPU, your stability test, and your RAM, and then your cooling and everything and it's just um, it's really nice that it's all there but it's just really throwing a whole lot at you um, all at once and that can really mess you up um, because you really just need to focus on one thing at a time and move down the list um, so that's why I really like uh, the extreme tuning utility more because it's really just straight to the point so basically when you just straight up in advanced tuning you got your um, AVX offset which most likely you'd want zero. Um, your processor max, uh, I would give it max voltage and um, boost power unlimited. Um, same over here, unlimited, and then just uh, all this stuff, you know, and just set your things kind of like I have them right here. These are all the main settings you're going to need. Um, just adjust those accordingly and then set your multipliers on, your, on each core, which mine's 5 gigahertz. And you can see my cache ratio is 45 and I gave it a max of unlimited and it's really straight to the point it's just those are the settings I wanted for my CPU it's not too overwhelming it doesn't need to restart or anything crazy and it has tests here and I don't know if this can adjust anything other than CPU um, so oh, that's cool so basically these are just different pages so you can want all controls um, so this is going to just tune all of your CPU accordingly. Um, they have basic tuning. I wouldn't mess with any of that. I would just mess with advanced tuning and just um, set your core multiplier to cache ratio. And then you can copy my other settings here. Unlimited on those. Um, there's stress testing, benchmarking. I wouldn't really make any profiles or any of that. This is the same thing basically you're going to find in the BIOS. Is essentially, it's just an extra piece of software so you don't have to do it in there. Um, but this gets straight to the point as far as in Windows tuning. Um, just straight to the CPU. So I guess there's no RAM tuning in here, but this is really good for just messing with your CPU inside of Windows. And it's uh, just we're all right there and it's all neat and it's not, it's not really confusing. You just click on what you want, you know, and you adjust it. Um, up or down. So I really like this software more than the AI suit. Um, and it's still Asus. It's good stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, so that's this one. Now we'll dig into the AI suit there. So this one is more confusing, like I was saying, because it just throws too much at you. Um, so if we go to Intelligent Processor 5, which is what you're going to want. It's kind of nice it has a PC cleaner in there, but anyways, um, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff here. You're going to see it's just, it's all over the place. Um, you can see it's got my CPU speed right now. It's reading that it's overclocked 19%. So that's pretty cool. So that can give you an idea of my 5 gigahertz 
uh, overclock is basically 19% overclock. So pretty cool. Um, you can see it only registers two of my fans because I have my fan set into a splitter. So um, that's why that is there. I don't have them all into the board. Um, but if you have them all on your board, you'd, you'd be able, you'd have more control over them in here, and that would be nice. But I just don't have that option. Um, so basically, you would want to come into. Uh, you definitely don't want to use power save mode um, if you're all about performance. You want to come and click on this for optimization. Um, I'd recommend using a TPU like we talked about in BIOS. So if you remember, we talked about TPU you're probably starting to realize this is the same thing that is in BIOS already. So this is why I don't recommend using Windows softwares um, because it's just extra crap on your computer that you can do in BIOS and get the same result or better. Um, but if you are going to use this, um, I would use TPU and use Extreme Tuning and if you have water, use TPU too. Um, it's normally set on TPU1. I would change it to TPU2 if you're on an AIO. And instead of per core, I do all cores. Um, but that's just preference. You can do per core, whatever you want. Um, the ratio settings, you can have it set different ways. Like you can assign, like a multi have it start from multiplier 46, um, or the default, which is 42, or the ASUS optimal ratio, which I, I don't know what that would be. My current overclock, 5.0, I don't know. Um, but you could start with one of those. Um, you can check encoding stability. Now this is where it kind of like adds an extra layer, you know, because it's going to do a stability check while it's doing all this. And uh, you got all these different um, settings here. I would just leave those alone until you start playing with it more. Um, you don't want AVX um, enabled because that's an offset ratio and that's going to ruin your overclock experience. Um, you can do a memory stress test. That's kind of cool. Um, I wouldn't worry so much about stability until after you find a clock and then check for stability. I do one at a time, but um, that's what makes this kind of confusing because it's doing so much at the same time. But if you were going to do all this, I would have it set like I have now, extreme, TPU2, all cores, have it start at 46, do stability and memory at the same time. Um... Yeah, EPU, I guess is like a power save mode. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have that on because you don't want power save mode. You want to be on max power all the time, honestly. Um, I guess you could leave this. If I don't know how, it, everyone's fans are different. This, this is kind of why I go back to the BIOS thing because you can change one thing at a time instead of trying to do this all you know, together, it's just getting overwhelming because it wants to do everything. Like, I don't want to mess with the fans right now. I want to mess with one thing at a time and go down. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess you could just let it run its thing and it would it would be fine. It would give you a decent setting, probably like 50% or whatever, or more of a silent one. Um, and then it would run its test here, and it would basically overclock one step at a time, test, overclock, Step, uh, test, overclock, test. Um, but doing it this way, it's going to restart itself a couple of times until it finds an error, and then it's going to go clock back down, and and that's how this stuff works. Um, but this is, honestly, this is more work than, than um, doing it through the BIOS. Um, they tried their best to lay it all out for you here, and this way is not not bad, but it's just, I don't feel that you're going to get the same uh, kind of stuff that you would get out of just going in the BIOS and dealing with it on your own. Um, but you can do it this way. You can run this little test here, and um, it'll do a clock. And like you can see here, performance tuning may reboot two or three times. Um, I mean, I guess we could try it out. Okay, so I can't let, let things go like that, so I just um, uh, restored the uh, BIOS back to default settings, and we're going to run the AI Suit 3.
and go ahead and get those results in here. I mean, this video is already going to be super long anyway, so why not? So now we're every, got everything back to default. I got to do this on the phone because uh, it's, it may restart. I don't want it to interrupt. I always forget it doesn't pop up right away. Okay. So we're at default. Uh, overclock's at 0%. Now we've seen my manual overclock gets 19% at 5 gigahertz. So let's go ahead and run this. We're going to do extreme tuning. TPU 2. Um, I may do two, one per core and one all core, but We'll try per core first. Um, we'll start from a ratio of 46. Um, any of these should be fine. Um, yeah, we'll try that. Try to get a higher overclock here. Enable stability. I've never ran this, so we're just gonna kind of wing it. No AVX. Yeah, we'll do a memory test. No EPU. I don't want any of that stuff. That's like a power save thing. Yeah, we don't want dig either. Um, I can change that in Windows. I guess I gotta leave it alone. Okay, let's see what kind of clock it'll um, give us on its own. Yeah, that's why I uh, use the phone here. Do its thing. You can see the board is running through some codes. Got a nine percent overclock. Let's see how high it'll go. I'm sure it's going to overclock some more. If you guys like this splash screen here, I can show you guys how to change yours too. Um, it's really not too hard. what happens here I don't know if it's done if that's just what I got was 9% let's try opening it again Okay, auto tuning will start in one minute for enhanced system performance. Okay, so we're at 9% multiplier 46. So let's, let's let it do its thing. This is kind of cool with the whole like clock of death performance gain here. Let's see what it's doing. 
multiplier 47. It's doing stress test, and then I guess it's going to bump it up. So we're at 11%. <clears throat> Core 1 and 2 are at 48. Okay, so now all the cores are the same. This is pretty cool. It's actually doing a uh, <clears throat> minimum and maximum temp. It's figuring out a voltage. We're at a 4.9. I wonder if this would give me a good 5 o'clock. Now we're at 4.9 on all the cores. Now it's going for a 5.0 overclock. Running a test here. You can hear my fans ramping up. Now it's going for a 5.1. But those voltages are mm, a little high. 1.4, it's kind of getting up there. Got some fan action going. It's going for a 5.2. Voltage has to be really high to run 5.2 though, so I don't know why the voltage is still around 1.4. Alright, voltage is going up. Seems to be struggling now a little. I think it may have failed, maybe. Let's see. It went back down to the 19% overclock. So it went back down to 5 gigahertz. So let's see what happens. So it's going to start at 5 now. I guess it wants to go up a little more. I don't know. Let's see. I 
What if I just push continue for a bell? Okay. Now it's going up by smaller increments. I don't understand why. I don't know what it's doing. It's weird. <clears throat> 5150, that's. makes no sense. It's basically telling me stuff I already know, that 5 gigahertz is a good clock, and um, 5.1 and 5.2 are just not worth it, because the voltage has got to be pretty high. It made it to 20%, so I guess it's just going to keep clocking until it hits <laughs> the most it can possibly do. Keep playing with it. Okay, so it's done trying to overclock any more than it already is, uh, has. Um, now it's going for fans. So, got me a 20% overclock on its own. Let it do its fan thing. save mode though. It's kind of annoying it wouldn't let me uncheck that. Um, I don't really see how this is a 20% overclock because cores 3 and 4 are at 4.9. Like this isn't even, to me this isn't even a 19% overclock. Um, it's more like 18. So, I don't know. It's kind of weird though. It says we're at a 20%, but that doesn't make sense because we got two 5.0s and a 4.9, but it, maybe that's because it did it in increments, so maybe it's like a 5 and a half, uh, or a 5.1, and a 5.1, and then a, yeah, I think they're all at halves, I think it's like a 49 and a half, and 49 and a half, and 50 and a half, and 50 and a half, will give me this 20%. Yeah, 101 times 50, instead of 100 times 50, so, that's how it's able to say 20%, um, which is kind of funny. So, 
Um, yeah, let's go into the BIOS and see what else it changed in there. Well, you get the splash screen when you do it. All right, let's see what it did in here. Yeah, it did what I said. So it basically went just past five gigahertz. I don't know how I feel about this stability-wise because I don't know how stable this this RAM frequency is. Because twenty nine thirty three is what it should be. But it's got 2962. I've never tested that, so maybe okay. But we got 5050, uh, uh, no EVX with a 101. So it did DR4 2962. Hmm. I don't know how stable that is, but we'll see. It also did TPU 1, which that's not what I wanted. I wanted TPU 2. Uh, we'll just leave it alone. We'll just leave it alone. We... I selected TPU 2 in the test, too. Um, it's got my voltage correct on my RAM, but the core voltage is adaptive mode, so. Okay, it's not bad. It's a um, pretty good overclock. Um, to me, this overclock is still a little weird. Um, I still like my 19% uh, overclock more. But this one is cool too. Um, I don't know how I feel about this though. The cache is kind of set weird. And the RAM is a little higher than I think it should be, but it's very close. It might still be just fine and stable here. So this 20% overclock that it did on its own is uh, very good, actually. So pretty, pretty good, pretty good. So we'll, uh, I'll post another video and just compare these three um, figures and sum it up. Let's go ahead and go into Windows. Tims are good. Everything seems fine. Let's see. I'm gonna run Cinebench just because. score I get with the 20% overclock here. 
versus my preferred manual 19%. I got a score of 1067. Um, my 5 gigahertz clock is this one here. But since Windows just basically started up, this could be within um, margin of error. Pretty interesting. Well, that's this. I will throw together a comparison video um, that's much shorter than this one, and it will be um, uh, BIOS TPU 2 mode versus manual overclock versus um, Asus Suit 3, and uh, we'll talk more about that. But um, the AI Suit 3 did uh, pretty good at getting. At squeezing as much out as it could. No. So the AI suit did do a good job um, overclocking for me, but um, somebody who does this as somebody who uh, you know likes to mess around with numbers all the time in the BIOS, I'm not as happy with this overclock as I am with my um, manual five gigahertz one, and um, I prefer that over to this one actually. But um, as far as just opening up software and letting it do it for you, this did a pretty good job too. Um, it, at least as far as giving you a highest number um, at a stable rate. I don't know if this would pass my my uh, extreme benchmark test where I run the three benchmarks and my antivirus softwares. But um, I know this is Windows stable, at least it, it seems to be, so I'm sure it'd be fine for gaming and all that stuff. But um, so that's uh, that's this software here. It did pretty good, pretty good. And uh, we'll compare some numbers in my other video, and I'll talk more on those. Pretty cool. Okay, I just wanted to rerun the test one more time and make sure that I had TPU2 selected. And it still gave me a 21% with a 102 times 50 here multiplier. Um, voltage I think was 1.42 or 1.425 is what it was running on our load. So there's that. I'm gonna I also ran this as a uh, per core and I'm gonna run one more in uh, TPU 2 extreme tuning with all cores this time. Um, I did notice that my cores 1 and 2 overclock slightly better than cores 3 and 4 by doing the per core, but um, I'm going to run this one more time as all cores and see how the numbers change. Um, do this one more time, and I'll come back when these results are done. Okay, the same test under uh, all cores together instead of um, per core. Uh, was much worse. It um, did overclock to 19% and then at one point it was at 23% but um, I don't know what settings it was exactly changing but they weren't stable enough and the computer had problems. So at the end of the day it came to a conclusion of 15% so definitely if you're going to use this the uh, per core option is better.
No, uh, honestly, if you want my opinion, I think you should stick with the bio stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, and just do it that way. Set your fans and everything in your bios to a static percentage that you're comfortable with. And then adjust your AIO fans with a curve. And then you'll leave your fans alone and then just worry about your um, CPU overclock. And then when you find a st stable CPU overclock with your fan profile and everything the way you like it, then play with your RAM. And then when you get your RAM where it's not freezing the computer, then you're good. And um, then for fun, you can mess with your um, cache ratio uh, cache ratio multiplier on your CPU if you haven't done that already, just for fun. And then when all that's good and done, then you can mess with your voltages and try to drop them one step at a time to get um, more heat under control. Because the less current running through that CPU, the better for heat control. So, um, anyways... That's just a little overview of different ways you can overclock. I, I know I was kind of all over the place, but I wanted to be pretty thorough and uh, just talk about those things. Um, but anyways, I hope this video helps you out, kind of getting more comfortable with uh, all the settings and stuff. They're basically all the same thing, just in a different format. So it, when you go in the BIOS, it seems more scary because you're, you know, you're like, oh, I don't want to mess anything up, but you really shouldn't have to worry because... Um, you can always just reset the BIOS back to a default setting. Um, and you, you saw even earlier when um, I did the 17% overclock and I did actually have to power down and restart. It, it did catch that and it adjusted itself and um, booted back up just fine. So it's really hard to um, really mess up pretty bad nowadays. Um, everything uh, as far as auto overclocking does a pretty good job no matter what you're using. but um, the best one that we've seen in this video was the TPU mode did the best job right away in the BIOS It did better than the Asus preset profiles. It did better than the extreme tweaker um, auto overclock tuner um, All that stuff, so I would just go into the BIOS and use that mode honestly and um, Then I'd play with it a little bit from there if you want some more power out of it um, Because the softwares in Windows will work, but they're just not as good um, they're very they're overcomplicated ex except for the extreme tuning the Intel extreme tuning that one's pretty nice but it only controls the CPU um, but I like it because it's very simple so um, anyways I know this video is getting very very long and I, I wanted to post it tonight because uh, I said I was gonna do that so um, anyways um, thanks for the uh, comments and all that um, and I uh, hope this video was kind of what you were looking for and uh anyways yeah have a good one guys take care